If you have been a part of our community for the last several months, you know we have been working our way in a marathon through the Gospel of Mark. And as the Spirit would have it this day, this is the actual Gospel reading that was intended for this day. This is the prescribed reading from the 12th chapter, beginning with verse 28. Listen for what God might have to say through the Gospel writer. One of the legal experts heard their dispute with Jesus and saw how well Jesus answered them. So the legal expert came over and asked Jesus, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is Israel, listen. Our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. You will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The legal expert said to him, Well said, teacher. You have truthfully said that God is one and there is no other. And to love God with all of the heart, a full understanding, and all of one's strength is to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more important than all kinds of entirely burned offering and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered with wisdom, he said to him, You aren't far from God's kingdom. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. I'm not sure I've ever written so many last-minute sermons as I have in the last couple of weeks. Everything keeps moving so quickly. I've been thinking about this sermon, well, for months, really, but at least this iteration of it for the last several days. And on Saturday morning, I finally sat down to try to actually put all the stuff that was rolling around in my head down on to paper. And by the time I had it down on paper, I felt pretty good about loving God and loving neighbor and the hopeful tone I was trying to share. Even after late yesterday afternoon, Mayor Lucas put out our stay-at-home order. I was still doing okay. And then the sun went down. The sun went down and I panicked. And I thought... What can I say that doesn't sound ridiculous and trite or completely cliche? What do I say? And who am I to say it? Who am I to speak any words of calm or hope or peace into this moment? And I said to my Ryan from our couch last night, this is what Good Friday really feels like. Now, most of us have probably had what I call individual Good Friday moments. Scary medical diagnosis. Bouts with depression. The death of a loved one. Personal situations that 
can completely overwhelm us. But y'all, this feels different to me, and I don't think I'm alone in that. You can't see Jonathan, but he's nodding at me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel okay about that. This feels like a community Good Friday moment. One where we know that Easter is out there somewhere, but we don't have any idea quite when or where or how to plan for it in the meantime. And this is hard. This is really hard. And so I sat on my couch with my Ryan who just sat there with me. And then I said, I need my computer. All my yellow legal pads were here at the office, which is normally how I work, but I said, I need my computer. And the first thing I wrote on the top of or typed at the top of the page was, we are not good Friday people. We are Easter people. And Easter people know that we can do hard things. And that means this is our time, church. This is our time because the world needs the church to be the church now more than ever. And not just in some Pollyanna kind of cliche kind of way. Yes, we need words of hope and community and peace and bold encouragement and creativity. But we also need words from people of faith that balance faith and reason. Mind and spirit, science and sacred. And we we may not know how to do this, to navigate these days on our own. But the church knows how to get from Good Friday to Easter Sunday. We may not be able to do it on our own, but as church... We know. This is a moment where we take our faith most seriously. This is kind of one of those where the rubber meets the road kind of situations. We talk about being Easter people. We buy Easter dresses and we make colored Easter eggs. We talk about being people who believe that Love wins every time, no matter what. And we believe that the light casts out the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. But it doesn't keep the sun from going down and helping us to feel a little afraid in the darkness because it's one thing when the darkness comes for us one at a time. When I'm having my Good Friday moment and you show up to shine your light into that, but when we're all experiencing our Good Friday moments all at the same time, this is new for many of us. Perhaps some of you, during the Second World War, you felt this way, uncertain about when it all would end. But as I look around this under 10 person sanctuary this morning, there's not one of us in this space who has a context from which to draw, not even 9-11. This enemy, which I really don't like that metaphor, but I can't come up this virus. We cannot see it. We don't really understand it. I know there are people who are much smarter than me with medical degrees and PhD. They understand it, but most of us don't understand it. 
We just know that it's keeping us from one another. And that it's physically separating us when we feel like we most need one another. And so, when the sun went down last night, I felt like I was stuck in Good Friday. And no Easter Bunny with Peeps or Cadbury eggs or a basket could make it better. But church, every year we practice Good Friday. We practice Good Friday and moving, transitioning ourselves, our spirits from Good Friday to Easter. And as we've been saying on Wednesday nights for the last couple of weeks, practice makes present. Practice doesn't make perfect. We're not going to get this exactly right. Practice makes present. And so we've practiced as a community moving from Good Friday to Easter. And so we must use that practice to be present to God, to ourselves, to our neighbors. We must be present with the deep love and the great hope during this time. We must be endlessly patient with one another and lead with compassion and unboundless creativity in trying to be church in a real and tangible way. Now I want to be clear. I'm talking about church in kind of a big C way here. Not this particular church or not just us as individuals. Because if you are listening to my voice this morning, you are a part of something much bigger than yourself. And whether you've celebrated one transition from Good Friday to Easter or a hundred, you have some idea of what I mean. And even if you are brand spanking new or renewed in finding what it means to be a person of faith, that's okay because we've got you. Not we like me and Jonathan as individuals, but we as the church, we've got you. We know how to do this. We, in this particular place, are a church that doesn't have to have all the answers. We're a church that says, the questions are okay. God is big enough to hold all the questions you've got. And all the anxiety and fear and uncertainty too. Jesus doesn't say in this passage from Mark that we have to have all the answers. That is not, having the answer is not the most important thing. Jesus says the most important thing is to love God, mind, and heart. Love God and love others. That, my friends, feels like a spirit of community, living into a spirit of community. Not a spirit, not a, a moment, not a spirit of rugged individualism. Love God. Love others. Both. We have practiced this. We have done hard things in this particular place over the last several years. And the church, the Big C Church, practices Holy Week every year. So that when we come to Good Friday moments, whenever they come, we can be reassured of God's great faithfulness. And not just 
be reassured of God's great faithfulness, but because of that, we can do hard things together. Together. And that's what it means to be the church. So whether you've navigated one Holy Week or a hundred Holy Weeks or you've never navigated Holy Week, I'm really glad you're here. I'm really grateful that there is a spirit of community here. I'm really grateful that to be reassured that on our own we might not figure this out, but together, together we are church. And this spirit of community that binds us together makes us church. And church knows how to get from Good Friday to Easter Sunday. And so church, we've practiced and now it's time to be present. Present to a world with the deep faith that we proclaim and celebrate year after year. Last year, Easter was on April Fool's Day. <laughs> that almost seems a little more appropriate this year. Because this year, we have to remember that Easter isn't just a specific date on a calendar. Easter is a spirit. Easter is a way of life. And so I'm wondering how you're going to be Easter people in a Good Friday pandemic, church. Yes, you individually, but also us collectively. And I've seen little Easter moments all week long. Moments of people living out this promise and commandment of Jesus to love our neighbor as our God, loving in a spirit of community, of what it meant to a doctor on the front lines of this to receive a love note, not from their spouse, but just a love prayer note that came in the mail. I've seen it in docs buying pizza for their nurses who are working their tails off. I saw it as I stood waiting to pick up our carry-out order from our local little Parkville small business restaurant that was overwhelmed with support from their community. Just three little examples that I have seen with my own eyes this week. And I hold on to those when I think that this is really hard. Because they'll get me through. And so know today, church, that whatever you're feeling, that's okay. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel scared. It's okay to feel uncertain. It's okay to feel whatever it is you're feeling. Our God is big enough to hold all of it. And together, we'll wait as Easter people. We will wait, not in a spirit of fear, but a spirit of Easter and a spirit of community. And we will teach the world to sing, to sing of hope, to sing of thanksgiving, to sing of gratefulness. And eventually, eventually, we'll sing of Easter too. May it be so. May it be so for us, beloved. Amen.